Okay, so let's go ahead and set a project up. So I have a folder for my development, so I'll do it in there. Um, I've only got a folder in here at the moment for a WhatsApp clone that I'm working on. Keep an eye out for that, it's an upcoming Udemy course. But this is essentially where I'm going to store my project. So I've opened up a terminal in the Documents folder, or a command prompt for you Windows users, and I'm going to CD into this development project, uh, sorry, folder. And this will be where I run the commands to set my project up. So let's go to the web browser, and I've Googled React Native. Now, this page here is going to give me all the links I need to set my project up. You don't have to follow along and click this link if you don't want to. You can just type the commands out as I, as I run them. Um, so, but if you want to, go to this page, click Get Started, and on the left, there's an Environment Setup link and they'll click setting up the, the development environment. I'll scroll down and it'll give us some commands. So there's an Expo CLI quick start and a React Native CLI quick start. We're gonna use Expo for this. It's just a very simple way of getting started. It also makes it super easy to access native device functionality like cameras and everything. Um, so basically, Expo just makes your development experience a whole lot easier even right through to publishing the app. So anyway, I'm gonna run this. So I'll copy this link and I'll just run it in my terminal like that. So I got an error about permission being denied. So um, on a Mac, what I'm going to do is just do the same command, but with sudo in front of it, like this. You won't need to do this on a Windows computer because there is no sudo command. But uh, I'll run that again with sudo there, and then I'll just type my password in as well. And uh, should be good now. All right, so that's done. I think it took about three minutes. Um, but anyway, what I'll do is scroll down now a bit further and we have this expo init command. I'll go ahead and run that, but I'm not going to use awesome project as the name because this, whatever you name this here is what your project's going to be called, or at least the folder it's contained in. So I'm going to um, go ahead and run expo init and I'll just call this uh, Google Translate. And we've got four options. Um, basically, you've got a blank one here, which we are going to use. You've got a blank one, but using TypeScript. You've got a, uh, a project that has React Native and some tabs set up. Uh, we are going to use React Native, but we'll install it manually later, so don't worry about that. And then Minimal, which is, yeah, I think it's just a very empty project. But uh, like I said, we're going to use the top one, a Minimal app as clean as an empty canvas. So click that and let this, uh, let this run. <laughs> Okay, that's done. And if I go to my development project, you'll see there's this Google Translate folder that's been created, and in there are a bunch of files which had to do with our project. If I CD into that project now, or into that folder, I should say, uh, and then run npm start, oops, npm start, you should see something happen. Oh, so I've got a project running already, uh, which is using that port, so uh, it's asking me if I want to use a different port. You probably won't see that, but I'll just click yes anyway to use a different port. Um, and yeah, you can see we've got a QR code, which is how we can run this um, on devices. I'll show you that later. But essentially the project is running. If I press W to open it in the web now, so I press W and it's uh, bundling and opening a new tab and we should see my project. So this right here is our React Native app. It's working and it's running in the web. Now in this project, the focus isn't really gonna be on the web, so uh, you can kind of ignore this. Close this tab down. We're gonna use the, uh, the iOS and Android simulators to run it, or your real device, whatever you want. But anyway, what I'll do is press Control C in my terminal now to stop this, and I'll open up the, open this project up in Visual Studio Code. So I'll type in code dot. If you don't have that shortcut installed, you can just open Visual Studio Code and then go to File, uh, Open Folder, and then find this folder and, and select it. So uh, make sure you select the uh, folder itself. Uh, and not any of the files inside it. So you'd select Google Translate and open that, and it should open in Visual Studio Code. So we've got a bunch of files here. A lot of them you can ignore. Yarn lock uh, and package lock, these are just to do with um, the dependencies. You probably won't need to change this manually very much. Uh, usually the changes here will be automatic, so don't worry about these two. Um, Babel config, just a config file, ignore that. Git ignore, files that it wants Git to not commit, if you are using Git, that is. Uh, again, you shouldn't have to worry about that too much. Node modules, which contains the information about the packages, so the actual installations of the packages. Again, you won't be changing that directly. Expo and Expo shared, also you won't be touching. These are auto-generated. You've got an assets file, which has some um, like assets, as the name suggests, so the favicons and the splash screen. Uh, we probably will change this in the course. I think we'll set a custom splash screen, uh, but we'll come back to that. And then essentially, app.js right here. This is the main part. This is where the magic happens. This is our app. So we can run this in the uh, iOS or Android simulators, 
Let me just hide some of these things for you. Uh, so create a bit more space. So if you don't have the iOS or Android simulators installed, I've done some videos on that which will show you how to get set up with those. Small bit of info, if you're on a Windows computer right now doing this project, you won't be able to run the iOS simulator. You can only run the iOS simulator on a Mac. With the Android simulator though, you can run that on Mac or Windows. So anyway, I got rid of that terminal, so I'll go to a new terminal in my Visual Studio Code right here. I just prefer having it down here instead of in a separate window. So it's exactly the same thing, um, but I've just got it here instead of that pop-up window. So anyway, I can start my project again using npm start. And then once that's running, I press I, which will open it in the, in the iOS simulator, or A, which will open it in the Android simulator. So it's starting up now, it's bundling. Let me make this a bit smaller, uh, like that. Okay, so yeah, the uh, device is starting up. And here we are, this is our app. So it's exactly what you see in there. Let me just uh, close some of these down. Um, so any changes you make here, should be seen there when you save it. And yeah, that's it. We've got our project set up, so we're ready to start developing now.